Guten Morgen, Schweinhunds. What the heck? Togan. So it's been a little while. I've just been doing other things. Um, so today we're going to be covering a very, very interesting topic called generating functions. So this is when you have a sequence of numbers that are used as the coefficients of powers of x in a Taylor series. And you can prove what that function is that that Taylor series is equal to, and that function is therefore the generating function of that sequence of coefficients. For example, the simplest of them is where all of the coefficients are 1, right? That would be the geometric series, x to the 0, which is 1, plus x to the 1, which is x, plus x squared, plus x cubed, plus x to the 4th. All the coefficients of the powers of x are 1. And if you do some basic arithmetic, you can, I'm sorry, some basic algebra, you can um, figure out that that whole series is equal to 1 over 1 minus x, where x is between negative 1 and 1, though that is a analytic continuation to the rest of the complex plane, except for <clears throat> uh, x equals 1. But other than that one point, it's a perfectly valid um, equation, and we're simply going to explore different sequences of coefficients and it's going to culminate in something that I've been doing some videos on in the past which would be the harmonic series so I'm gonna do a bunch of different ones just because they're very interesting and they're fun to solve they're kind, you kind of don't expect it and things that seem like related turn out not to be in a lot of ways or they don't they don't even look the same when you do something that's really really close to that and so we're just going to see what that's like so let's go so to start this video off, we're going to start with a really simple sequence. I'm not going to do the sequence of just ones, because that's just the geometric series, and we've seen that tons of times. So instead, we're going to start off with the sequence of integers. So we're going to consider our sequence a of n, a sub n to be n, right? Just whatever the integer is. So starting at 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., etc. And that means that we're essentially building a series that looks like this. So we have starting at n equals 0 to infinity, we're literally looking at a sub n times x to the nth power. In this instance, a sub n is just n by definition, so let the sequence a sub n be the sequence of integers starting at 0. And so it's simply going to be that, right? And there's a couple simplifications we can make, right? We can just, first of all, it, it can help to observe simply what the first few terms of the sequence are in case there's any you don't need or any that uh, you can simplify in any way. In this case, we're going to not need one of the terms because the first term is 0 times x to the 0 and then there's 1 times x to the first power plus 2 times x squared plus dot dot dot, which means that this is equal to the same sequence starting at 1 because x to the 0 is 1 and 0 times anything is 0. So this can actually start at 1. Right? We don't actually have to include the first term. But <clears throat> what you want to try is sort of to manipulate this into other similar forms so that you can sort of extract from it what the original function has to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this one a of x, like the function a of x is described by this sequence of numbers because we've defined a sub n to be the sequence that we're looking at. And we're actually going to keep it at zero because the point is, is we want we want to sort of have it as a general solution. Things starting most of the time, these things will start at zero. If there's a if there's an exception, say where we're dividing by zero, then we don't want to start there, right? But we're not dividing by zero here. We're simply multiplying by zero. So that first term is perfectly valid. It's just zero. And what we're going to do is we're going to be clever. We're going to investigate what x times a of x is. X times a of x is simply just multiplying this by x. So the power of x is going to go up by one. Right, so this is equal to the sum from n equals 0, sorry about the squeak, n times x to the n plus 1. But now what do we want to do? Um, we actually, now that I think about it, we do want to start that at 1 because we're going to need that here. We're going to sort of do a perspective shift now. This is n plus 1, this is just n, and this is starting at 0. But to sort of compare the two and, and have the same indices, we want it to start at 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract 1 from each of the n's, which means we have to start 1 higher at n equals 1. And subtracting 1 from this is just going to result in n in the power, and this is going to be n minus 1. And that's actually good, because what we're going to end up with is the sum 
from n equals 1 to infinity of n minus 1 times x to the n. And now all we have to do is distribute x to the n in, and we're going to end up with the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of n times x to the n, which is our original sequence, by the way, minus the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of x to the n, because it's just 1 times x to the n, so that doesn't change the value. And the reason why this is good is because now we have an expression for something in terms of a of x, right? We have it in terms of itself and something else that we know the value of, right? This is a of x again. So we have that x times a of x is equal to a of x, which is this thing right here, based on our original definition, right? Not the original one, starting at 1 instead. Um, minus the geometric series, right? That's really easy. But it's not just the geometric series. The geometric series starts at 0, and then that would be then equal to 1 over 1 minus x. This is missing the first term, which would be equal to 1. So it's minus the geometric series, which is 1 over 1 minus x. But we also are missing the first term. So we're subtracting 1 from the geometric series. But since we're subtracting the geometric series, that really means we're adding 1 back in. So we simply add 1. And this is what x times a of x is equal to, which means we can solve for a of x, right? Because we have it in terms of itself on either side of the equation, which means we can combine like terms, factor it out, and solve for it. Let's simplify this first. 1 is nothing but 1 minus x over 1 minus x, and so now we can combine these two things together. And since this is minus 1, right, these ones are going to cancel, and we're going to get minus x over 1 minus x, right? So these were just combining like terms, negative 1 plus 1 is 0, and it's a minus x. So we're going to end up with this. So we know that x times a of x is a of x minus x over 1 minus x, which means we can subtract that over and solve for it. It's very, very easy. So we subtract a of x over, we have that a x times a of x minus a of x is equal to, I can sort of simplify this, um, I can write it as x over x minus 1 by pulling the negative into the denominator, I can flip the difference. So this is equal to x over x minus 1. And now what I can do is I can factor a of x out, right? So this is equal to a of x times x minus 1, right? And now, very simply, I just have to divide x minus 1 over. And we end up with the equation or the function that has a Taylor series where the coefficients of that Taylor series are simply the integers starting at 0. And all we have to do is divide it down and we end up with a of x is equal to x All right, I'll see you dad. It's equal to x divided by x minus 1 squared. And since we can flip the difference, as it's more commonly seen because of the original look of the geometric series where it's 1 minus x in the denominator instead of x minus 1, we can write this as x over 1 minus x squared instead because we're squaring it so that the negative factor doesn't matter. And this is a of x, right? If you take various derivatives of this and make the Taylor series of it, you will get 0 times x to the 0 plus 1 times x to the first plus 2 times x squared plus 3 times x cubed, etc., etc. It's a very, very neat little formula. Very nice, too. And that's our first generating function done. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to define our next sequence. And I think what we'll pick is something very, very closely related. We'll call it b sub n so that we change it up. So we're going to have b sub n going to be equal to 1 over n. Okay? So instead of doing reciprocals, I'm sorry, instead of doing integers, we're doing reciprocals of integers, which means we cannot start at 0 this time, right, because it's 1 over n. We have to start at 1. So we're going to base it on a previously known one, which is the geometric series, right? So if we have the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n, so all the coefficients are 1, it's very easy to show that this is equal to 1 over 1 minus x, right? Now, <clears throat> we're simply going to integrate both of these things term-wise. So we have the integral of 1 over 1 minus x dx, which if you do, um, you know, first level calculus integral, you see that this is equal to negative the natural logarithm of, of 1 minus x, right, plus a constant. But we're, we're going to ignore that constant for now. We're going to just pick the constant to be 0, which means we can just integrate this thing term-wise because it converges absolutely in its radius, conver radius of convergence. And integrating polynomials is really easy. So we know that the power is going to go up by 1, so it's from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n plus 1 over 
n plus 1, right? When you, when you integrate, you raise the power by 1 and divide by the new power. But we can readjust our indices here, right? So we can shift, we can subtract 1 from all of the n's, which means we have to add 1 to the lower index, right? Adding 1 to infinity doesn't change it, which means that this is equal to the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of x to the n over n, which proves that our generating function that we wanted for powers of x to the n, where the coefficients are 1 over n, is simply negative the natural logarithm of 1 minus x. Or we could say that this is equal to the natural logarithm of 1 over 1 minus x, because the negative 1 can be brought in as a power of the input of the natural logarithm, and, 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 and negative 1 power means the reciprocal. So the thing that the Taylor series with the coefficients of 1 over n is exactly equal to the function natural logarithm of 1 over 1 minus x. This is the generating function of this sequence for of, of the sequence of reciprocals of integers. So that's generating function number two. So we're going to explore a slightly different one now that's sort of off the beaten path of what we've just been doing just to explore cool things. We're going to call this one f of n or f sub n and hopefully that uh, piques your curiosity as to why I jumped from b to f but in fact I'm going to call it capital F sub n. Quick little thing, this channel has an Instagram, so it is at what the hectagon, of course, and it has a Twitter also. So this is Instagram, and of course this is Twitter, and it is of course naturally, of course naturally, naturally, of course, also what the hectagon, at what the hectagon. Nope, at the hect, oh, gone. Oh, can't spell today. Okay. Hectogon, and my email is the incorrectly spelled what the hectagon, why spell check before you make the email, right, that you can't then change, at gmail.com. Now, all of these are in the description if you don't want to have to somehow watch the video and pause it and actually write it down. Um, along with other Instagram, Twitter, YouTube accounts that me and my friend Bill run. Uh, he does one for D&D. We together stream on Mixer under the moniker of Fred Wood Live. So check the description for other stuff. This is just for my channel. This is my Instagram, at whatthehectogon. Twitter, at whatthehectogon. And email, at whatthehectagon. Because I spelled it wrong when I made the email and now I can't change it. So, that's the, uh, that's the stuff. Thank you for watching and, uh, bye bye